Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Gina Adfos, and I work at the SDC Library planning art exhibits and events, along with Sin Sanchez and Betty Montejano. Welcome to the first of our five-part virtual workshop series. Each of these workshops, we hope you learn a little bit about how art plays a role in our everyday life. Today, we welcome Jaden D. Blanco to kick off the series with the world's oldest art form, drawing, figure drawing specifically. I hope you enjoy, and if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. And also, this is a collaborative session, so if you have a pencil, piece of paper, then join in. And thank you, and please help me to welcome Jaden. Hi, everyone. Um, so to start off, my name is Jaden D. Blango. Uh, I'm a figurative artist, and I'm 21 years old. Definitely encourage everyone, if you're able to, to definitely pick up any piece of paper any pencil and kind of follow along in a very sort of open way. I'm using today just a regular pencil, just like a 2H, probably softer. Just any normal number two pencil will do. The reason for that is I wanted to keep it more accessible, I guess you could say. Um, so any pencil. Usually, though, I will say that when you get into it, you want to sharpen your pencil a little bit more like this, just so you can have more versatility with the kind of marks that you can make. But this will do fine. So just pencil. And I doubt we're going to use it much, but an eraser, an eraser is fine. And that's really it for materials, paper. I'm using newsprint today just because it's, it's nice, it's smooth, and it's kind of easy to uh, work with right across, but any paper. So to start, I wanted to just bring up a little uh, presentation that I made just introducing myself and kind of like the work that I do. Hopefully everyone can see that. I think everyone can. So, I wanted to start <clears throat> just with a little discussion on like progression. Because I think in art, it's often really a touchy subject when we think of, like, am I progressing? Am I you know, moving forward? Am I learning this fast enough? And that, that sort of talk. So I just wanted to kind of break down my own sort of progress and, and talk about that. So in high school is when I really started to consider art like something that I wanted to do. And funny enough, I really started with animation as, as opposed to like any fine art. So it started with making these little like animations that I was really just experimenting with just to kind of figure out what I even wanted to do with drawing because I I drew you know casually like as a kid you know like most kids are drawn to drawing and coloring like naturally but as we get older we sort of we sort of lose that uh, confidence in, in the exploration of it. my senior year of high school I really decided to uh, try to I started doing more figure drawing, I would say, in 2018. Uh, these are from 2017 and 2018. I was interested in, like, how to get the figure on there, like, you know, when a figure that is, like, people can look at it and recognize it, you know? But at this point, I had no confidence in things that, you know, trip most people up, like, you know, the face or the feet or the hands and things like that. This is where I, when I started to really go into that. And this was the first portrait that I did of my sister that was uh, recognized like in my family. And they were like, wow, you know, <laughs> like that, you know, that looks like your sister and all this. And there was a sense of uh, like accomplishment, you know? And, and once you get that, that success, that feeling of, did it you know you you then 
you want it again, and you want it again. And that sort of thing usually drives our feeling that we want to progress, that we want to improve. However, I think that it is important to, in approaching art and art study, to make sure that what you're doing is not so much for any sort of need for uh, validation because it becomes kind of like quicksand after a while. So that's something to keep in mind. I'll talk about that a little bit later, but in, in studying art, there's more to it than a pat on the back, you know? So that was that, was that uh, portrait. And then I believe, yeah, at the start of college. So at the end of uh, my senior year of high school, I was trying to really just understand. I already decided, okay, I want to major in art and I want to, you know, study you know, drawing and, and things like that. And I was kind of confused though, because I was like, okay, so I know how to draw like, you know, I would draw manga and stuff like that years and years. That's pretty much all I drew. Um, but I wanted to have a sense of life drawing. I wanted to know how, how do I draw from life, you know? And so I went to the library and I just started taking uh, out any book that would say anything about drawing. I found this book called The Natural Way to Draw by Nicolaitis. If you just Google natural way to draw book, uh, it should come up. It taught me the whole kind of approach to drawing and, and figure drawing, especially that I try to implement and like things that I find to be true and helpful, you know, in, uh, in practicing and studying. But so fast forward a little bit to the start of college, and now I'm like, you know, looking more into the figure, trying to understand that, taking some of the concepts from this book. And I'm starting to draw sort of like this. These are some drawings from 2019. And I'll say, you know, the everything that we just said about what you do uh, doesn't necessarily have to be for a pat on the back. I'll say that some of these definitely felt like I was like, this is the best drawing I've ever done and will ever do. That's it. Like, I remember specifically, like, after drawing this area here and like, and I was like, all right, I'm done. I can tap out. Like, that's it. <laughs> and then, you know, obviously for this hand, I completely gave up. I just didn't want to deal with it. Um, but I remember that, that feeling of like, I, I did it, you know, success. And what I noticed was as I would do that more and sort of uh, raise the bar for myself, if I was looking for that outside validation for it, it was getting more and more infrequent because I raised the, the level of like, you know, what to expect sort of. So that's something to kind of watch out for and just to be more in tune with your own standards. I think is is the most important thing when, when studying art, and especially figure drawing. It's very open and broad. Um, fast forward now, so that was 2019. 2020 with lockdown and all of that. I decided to take that year uh, and just study as much as I could uh, on things like anatomy, portion, Big, uh, the face structure and uh, the planes of the face, things like that, uh, because I wanted to be able to understand what I was looking at, you know, before I would draw. So, say, you know, for this for this kind of schematic drawing, it's very, uh, it's done in pen, so it's uh, not intended to be uh, any sort of kind of expression. But with things like, I believe these were studied from, I have an anatomy book, but like if you look at like Da Vinci's drawings of dissections, they kind of take on their own like expression, you know, like it's an art form all of a sudden, just his anatomical studies. And I think that that's really interesting, but they still serve a purpose regardless of if you want to make them a form of expression. Because, 
you know, understanding the, the way that this is moving, the function of it, why is it there? It all helps you to be able to think quickly, like on your feet. And I think of drawing as, it's like you're dealing with some sort of wild end. You have to constantly be like on your feet and prepared and sort of like ready to react, but then also with a certain amount of certainty. You have to be sure. So, and we'll get into that a little bit when we talk about uh, lines. But so, yeah, so studying um, in 2020, it's pretty much how I spent the whole year. Did a lot of master studies. This is from Michelangelo, um, also in pen, taking a lot of notes. Like, you know, don't be afraid to make a pretty drawing and then, you know, not learn from it because you, it's for you, you know, if you're studying. So definitely use it. You know, I, I very much encourage breaking down drawings. Like if there's a certain aspect of drawing and you don't like it as a whole, there's a certain part of it that you're like, you know what, that's, that's really work. I would say isolate it. Focus on just that like little section after you're finished and just really kind of, you know, maybe even write it out. What, what about that was interesting? What about that work, you know? And that, that I found to be extremely helpful for like the next pictures that I make. Uh, they can kind of uh, carry on that legacy of whatever was working in that last picture that might not have been successful, but it taught something. So in a way it was beneficial. So yeah, studying facial muscles, just kind of understanding where everything is at. And then fast forward to now. So these are the kinds of drawings that I'm doing now. I do a lot of portraits. I would say that figures, it's coming back. But there was a time kind of after the whole kind of like everyone was kind of denouncing traditional art where it kind of fell off and it didn't sort of, it wasn't around, uh, but it then came back and now it's back and on the rise again. But I think that it also uh, you know, has a long way to go in terms of like fully incorporating it into contemporary art and like understanding its role in contemporary art because it is a very old tradition, but you know, dating all the way back to, you know, cave paintings and things like that with representational of, of, you know, animals and things like that. But I, I'm interested in that, um, in figure drawings, contemporary book. So uh, that being the end of my introduction here, does anyone have any questions before I start talking about lines or any questions before I sort of start actually drawing? Feel free to put that in the chat. Okay. Kaylee says, what are your favorite materials to use? I would say, I would say charcoal. Charcoal and graphite for drawing at least. Um, I have here this some examples of uh, you know pencils that I would use. And this, this is just like I think a red colored pencil, honestly. It's like kind of like a reddish brown color, which is like a real classic color. It's got a nice like, sort of look to it. It's very like Raphael kind of. That's a lot of like the studying that I do uh, is with pencils like this for the sake of the uh, keeping that authentic feeling. The only problem with it sometimes if you press too hard with these longer pencils, they do break, but they're very fun. Very fun. Um, the pencils like this sharpened is an HP, just very soft. I like to use soft pencils just to sort of give it a nice sort of feeling. Layla says, for charcoal, do you use gloves? There are many artists that use gloves for what for charcoal. What is your take on that? I would say it depends on how big you're going and what kind of charcoal. Um, because things like vine charcoal are very, very soft and they sort of smudge and get really uh, messy. And there's a place for that, you know, if, if your work calls for it, um, you know, that kind of, if it, if it works for it. But if you're working with charcoal and, and to get those like really rich dark colors or 
those tones, then I would say it might be helpful to use gloves just so you don't smudge the kind of, you know, the paper, but it's not necessary. Um, if you're, you know, kind of careful with them, like holding your pencil, um, which I'll, I'll kind of talk about uh, in a minute uh, when we talk about lines, just like the way that you hold a pencil and like kind of like that, uh, which will enable you to kind of really, you know, work the drawing and be loose, but, you know, spontaneous and, and, and confident, which is a big part of art in drawing specifically because there's nothing to hide. When you draw a line and it's kind of like, you know, unsure and you're like, oh, here we go. It, it, it tells the whole way through, you know, like that is a form of expression in, an, in and of itself. Because lines are abstractions. They're not real. You know, they don't exist. And the only way that they become like potent or, or strong is if they describe and if they are earnest and like authentic, you know? So this, this relates because it, it has to do with, uh, you know, represent, representational drawing. So say I was drawing like, uh, you know, a cup or something like that. I drew this cup and I said, okay, Here's the face of the cup. Here's the side of the cup. I should actually draw a little bigger for everyone. Okay, so say here's the surface of the, the, the opening. Right. And then here's the and I'm I'm specifically doing this just to show like when you're Focus is the, the outcome or the outline with the lines. It shows and it's trackable. So if I'm, I'm just very, very, very meticulous about this, like, it's like, okay, sure, yeah, like, okay. You can accept that as a symbol or a cup, you know, that's fine. Um, however, the expression of the lines here, it, it doesn't show that you you are sure of what you're seeing and what you're drawing. And that, that comes off because, you know, the drawing, like, this is it. It's line. And then it's tone over that. But the lines are still sort of the main, the contour is the main sort of aspect of drawing. So that, this is different from if you're drawing a cup and you say, okay, so that's, this is, and I said I'm using a normal pencil. This is the sort of opening. Say, okay, that's an opening. And then you just draw this straight line there. That's the side. That's the side. That's the bottom. Now, what this does, and that's different from this, is this is workable. This can change because it's a, it's an honest go at what you're seeing. This is attempting the end result too quick. It's trying to get at the final result too quick. And it's, it becomes stiff and afraid, which is not something that you would want from a drawing, you know? Um, with this and drawing like this and sort of all these marks that you kind of see here, like it's all the best guess at, at what you're looking at. And you're swinging. So you're not holding it, your pencil like this when you draw. You're not writing with it. Because that, that is reserved only for the very end. When you're, when you're drawing, you want to draw from your shoulder. You want to hold your pencil like, uh, I don't know if you've ever held a crayon like this. You're going to hold it kind of between your uh, index finger and your thumb. You're just going to overhang the rip on it. And what that's gonna let, allow you to do is you can use the point of it, you can use the side of it, you can you know, move really fast in, in a way that's not, you can't do that with the same level of 
you know, confidence and ease because you're too stiff. Um, so what drawing like this allows you to do then is once you have this in your best guess and honest go, what you can do is just come back and you can refine it. So say like, okay, maybe this edge here, maybe I want this to be really sharp. So I'll go back in with that writing sort of hand and I'll, I'll create that hard edge around here. Really, you know, make it stiff. And then maybe I'll come in here and reinforce one of these edges. And I'm like pulling the line. So when you, when you draw a line, you want to kind of like shoot it, you know, like send it out there. And what you're going to do is you're going to come back. And if you don't like the line, that's fine. You can completely erase, get rid of it. But it, it's the honest attempt that, that shows through the entire way. That's the whole kind of biggest point about, about lines that I wanted to make. The lines that you make, it'll show your authentic, like how you are thinking, you know? So you can't, you can't hide that. With paint, it's easier to hide. With, with line, there's, there's, there's nothing to hide. It's, here it is, you know? Here's what I was thinking. Um, so you have to be mindful of that I think, when you when you go into drawing. So I think that's enough talk about drawing or about trying about lines. I see another question. Uh, in a field of art that fell off, what kept you encouraged to continue pursuing your art? That's a great question, and I think that it stems from like how I was saying earlier, how it shifts from pats on the back to continually challenging your own sort of whatever stage that you're at, you know? So I think it's, it's something that comes more of a, like from within and it's, it takes, it takes, I think, which is why it's, it's amazing to see artists in any field, you know, really go for it because what that suggests is that they're convinced themselves of their convictions, you know? And I think that that's, I think that that's what it requires. And I think that for me, that's, that's what it has been. It's, it's been uh, a sort of, at the very least, a curiosity and the uh, potential of, you know, maybe this, is, maybe this is something that could be interesting and could also, you know, give to the world and it could teach something and it can be something that is, positive and, and, you know, for, for the good of, of the world. I think that that's, that's, that's definitely kept me in pursuing, you know, for the humanities and culture and all that, because art shapes culture. I see some more questions. Okay. Thank you, Melissa, for joining. Uh, Caleb says, what are your favorite styles of on paper art. Also, do you have a personal style? That's a great question about style. Um, I would say my favorite style on paper. I'm. I would say I'm a fairly representational artist. So that just means like things as they appear to our eye, put on paper. I think that that's my uh, sort of favorite style. But I'm also very like interested in drawing in general, because like we had mentioned, lines are, you know, abstractions, they don't exist. And it's interesting to see how people employ that abstract idea and to create symbols. So this is a symbol here for a cup, right? It's not a cup, drink out of it, definitely can pour water on it or in it. So it's a symbol for something that we recognize by our associations. And it's really, really interesting to see how people use those symbols in a contemporary way. So, you know, regardless of the, the style or, the, uh, you know, whatever sort of aim they're going for with their work, just to see 
their sort of contemporary like use of that like faculty is is really interesting. Um, and I would say a personal style. I something about style that I, that I really was thinking about was you know looking at the old masters. You know you can look at them and say like, okay. The, the old master's style, that, that kind of renaissance, high renaissance look, you know, with the, the red pencil and all of this. And what I, what I realized a little while ago, a few years ago, was this style wasn't so much like something that they set this up and I'm like, all right, here's, here's what I'm going to aim at. Here's the style. I'm going to work towards that. Style develops naturally through honest and earnest observation I think. so it's not so much that it's like there's this uh, sort of frame that i want to like, put my art in and i'm gonna only aim for that it's more of an, an honest observation uh, that that genuinely births a style that really has little to do with artists themselves it's it's really something that occurs almost spontaneously and without knowing. So I'm sure that like some of the stuff that I've done, like people can like see it and be like, oh, like your style and that. But I, I would say for me, it's, it's hard to see. And I think that's a common sentiment like, um, like amongst artists because it's uh, just, just how you see as, as opposed to like, like what I want it to look like. Hopefully that makes sense. So we can kind of move on a little bit from just talking about lines. And we're gonna talk about kind of that topic or a topic from that book that I recommended uh, on the natural way to draw. And one of Nicolaides one of his major points was that you're not drawing the thing, which is kind of weird to say, you would think. We're trying to draw stuff. If we're trying to draw from life, we're trying to draw things. But what you're doing is you're drawing. So you're not trying to draw the thing as much as you're trying to draw what the thing is doing. It's a, it's a, it's a shift, but it'll change the way that you go about drawing. So to give an example, to kind of get into bigger drawing, if I wanted to draw someone like bending over to pick something up, you know, there's a way that you can draw that. And it's... also, I want to preface this that there is, no wrong way to draw, but these are the ways that I've learned how to draw and the ways that I uh, enjoy my drawing uh, that I think are helpful in, in that continue to keep drawing fun and interesting and alive. Um, but so there's a way to draw where you know you just say, okay, so this is the this is the head and you're like he's gonna pick something up. So here's his arm. He's reaching out. Here's his other arm. And it's very like these are the sort of final lines. Like these lines can't be uh, changed much once these are set. So let's say, hopefully everyone can see deep there on that. Um, so let's say that's one approach, right? That's contour, that's the edges. That's trying to draw um, I kind of uh, did something here that's actually something I'm going to show in a second. 
that is not uh, pure uh, outline or contour drawing. And that's drawing the action. So instead of this, <clears throat> what we're talking about is if someone is trying, if you want to really kind of push home the action of something, it's, it's useful to uh, really push that, but like in a way that's not misusing the, the point. So what I mean by that is exaggeration, but exaggeration in a way that stays authentic. So if I wanted to draw this sort of a person reaching for something, I would probably draw just one general line that says, this is what's happening, you know? And this is known as like the line of action. And what this allows you, this, what this gives you is sort of a, a, a check, uh, like a, a point that you can reference when you're trying to understand what you're trying to illustrate. So with this, I would say if I wanted to draw somebody picking something up, let's say, so there's the head, and I'd say that's an arm. And so the difference between, and then let's say it's like picking up like a heavy box or something, like by the top. Um, the difference between these two is that this is open-ended and this is not. So I can't, I can't really, so if I wanted to change one of these lines in here, I can easily just you know, use the point of my pencil change this line, I can add in what I understand about the arm, you know, kind of bring the, what, I, what I know into the, into the picture. Um, and I can also bring sort of my perspective on it, how I feel about uh, this person and like what they're doing, you know? And all of that finds expression through, in, at least with figure drawing in the beginning, with your line. So kind of how we're, we were talking about before, like really being mindful of the lines that you make. Um, all of that comes into play here. But it's still very open. You know? And if I don't like it, it's to say, OK, so I don't have any use for this little tail bit here for the line of action. So I don't need it anymore, which is fine. I can get rid of it. And, you know, at this, at the moment, the head is just a circle, you know, but I can change it. I can make them, you know, look up here. I can make them look, like say like, you know, like who's, who's gonna help me sort of thing. Like I can make them suffer. I can make them happy. I can, you know, it's, it's, it's extremely open-ended. However, with, with pure outlines, you're stuck. So I encourage this, this sort of way of drawing because it's, it's, about, it's about the action. It's about like what is going on. You know, it's about sort of like finding out as you're, as you're drawing, which is why I, I compared the... I compare drawing to sort of like dealing with a wild animal just because it 
you never know like what it's going to do or what's going to work. You know, it's kind of like you have to sort of figure it out on the spot in a way. And I recommend doing a lot of like, like drawings like this, like just where your lines are moving just really going for it, but staying purposeful. So, you know, a lot of the times when, when we see uh, drawings that, you know, go for the action, it's a lot of like, you know, kind of everything is sort of everywhere and all of that. But, and that's good, that's good because you're losing that fear of being wrong that comes uh, along with wanting to draw representation. However, there is a point where this becomes uh, sort of that, like we were saying before, that style or that look that, that you become accustomed to. And you can get really stuck in that. So I, I warn against that just because um, you want to remain, like we were saying before, earnest. You want to remain sort of authentic to what you're seeing. So what that means is no frivolous lines. So put in what needs to be there at the start, at least. If you want to do this, you know, at the end or, you know, midway through, you know, by all means, there's no rules against that. There's no rules at all, really. But if you're trying to draw the action, I find that it's helpful to only in, include at the beginning what needs to be, uh, and then you can kind of expand out from there. So, um, so I would recommend doing that often and just kind of like not being afraid of it. You know, I feel like we're, we're afraid to draw sometimes. Uh, and because we, we don't know, you know, how it's, how it's going to turn out or, you know, what, what I'm going to look at, can I show people this? Am I going to, you know, have to make fun of myself for this, you know, and and all of that is really not super helpful, and it's it doesn't sort of encourage the progression of where you want to go. But I would say drawings like this and just kind of like finding your way around what you want to draw, and sometimes not even knowing what you want to draw where you draw it. Like just sort of figuring out as you're as you're going that okay, so I want to draw a figure sort of falling. Okay, so how can I show falling? You know, and using lines that are uh, useful for suggesting that in a way that's. It's a funny paradox, actually, because in a way you have to be confident, and in, in another way, uh, you have to be humble enough to know that you're probably wrong. <laughs> so it's a funny, it's a funny, it's a strange thing to do, really. Drawing is a strange thing to do. Uh, it really is. But I think that there's something in taking these leaps of faith that in a way will show you, you know, also where you're at as far as your, your, you know, we talk about like mental state a lot, you know, you know your art reflecting. I think it, I think that's true. And it shows you your inner state of like, just your being, you know, where are you at? How are you feeling? Cause this lines like this, you know, are much different from lines like this. You know. It'll become a mirror as you're doing this sort of drawing as to how you're really doing, what you're really thinking about, and where your head's at. Um, which is kind of something that, you know, in, in certain traditions that they do with uh, drawings of like the mandalas, uh, paintings of the mandalas, they just create them on a daily basis almost to sort of kind of take a, almost like a mental picture or a visual 
take a, a visual image, take a visual picture of their mental, you know, their spiritual, things like that. Um, so yeah, I would say that's, that's good for drawing action. Does anyone have any sort of questions about that so far? Well, then you are pointing out humbleness. Yeah, I, I think that it's, it's a, definitely an important aspect of life in general, honestly, <laughs> for sure. Absolutely. Take those leaps of faith. And I think that's honestly what, uh, what drawing teaches me on a daily basis. Make, a, make the best guess you can, you know, if you don't know what you're, what you're going for. And find out. Be willing to find out. I think that that's very, that's something you can, you can hold on to whether you draw or not. Daily drawing really kind of brings it to the forefront. So now what I wanted to do is I wanted to actually get into drawing figure and uh, get into uh, drawing from what we see. So I think there's going to be a link put in the, uh, in the chat about the website that I enjoy practicing from. Well, I guess I can, you know what, I can bring it, I can bring it to, to everyone who, who is here. Would you rather draw from figures or would you rather learn about drawing from imagination? Which one seems more interesting to you at the moment? I'll leave it up to you all. I see one imagination. Imagination, two for imagination. Okay. Three for imagination. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we can do that. We can, we can. Both are great figures. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a really great website. I, I find it extremely helpful for like just the daily practices. It has a, um, like a class timer that you can set to, um, if you want to, you know, go for like an hour or two hours, something like that. Uh, and just sort of, it'll keep time. For you. So definitely check it out if you're interested in figure drawing. But we can talk about imagination. So I think that imagination drawing comes from uh, seeing and like just taking a lot of things in for future reference. So what that means if we're drawing figures is take looking at a lot of people <laughs> and just kind of taking in everything that we were just talking. About. What does it actually look like for them to do this action? So that you can, you know, bring it back when you're going to draw and have a mental bank of things that you know uh, that you can employ. So, so let's say I was drawing someone running. Or something like that. I think I think I've seen people running, and so this is the kind of process. You're you're like, okay, I want to draw someone running. Say, I think I've seen someone running kind of like this. Their chest comes forward, their legs go back. So this is this is their arm. Their hand. This is their other hand. And this is one leg. This is the other leg. Comes up a little bit. And say, say, I want to give them a really high stride. Like I want to have them almost marching. So I would say that when you draw from imagination, what you're really trying to do is convince like everyone uh, that is your audience that you actually saw this thing. So what that means is you have to be able to sort of mentally really kind of trust that you are 
representing this thing in a way that's believable. And drawing, drawing the action of something lends to that because there's room for a correction, like what I'm doing right now. Like, okay, so like there's certain things that I know, like, okay, so I know that there's probably a me here, goes like that. I know there's, you know, multiple muscles and there's another, uh, there's bones in there. I know that there's this um, calf muscle here. Gastrocnemius. I know that there's, there's this biceps femoris. There's this muscle here. It goes in the back. And, and so what that, what that does is like even just, just this section starts to become more um, believable. And so what you're doing when you're drawing is you're, you're taking this abstract idea of line and you're saying, okay, so here's this idea, this abstract, and you're gradually bringing it into being. Almost. You're, you're, you're fleshing it out as, and it's, you're bringing it to life as you're, as you're drawing and you're making more and more believable. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you're making it more accurate. It just means that you're going about it in a way that is earnest. I've used that word a lot because it's, it's one of my favorite words recently. And it's, it's, it's about the authentic approach to what you're trying to do. And then believing in it enough to, to really bring it to a resolution. And I think that that's, that's, fundamentally like the strength of imaginative work you know you'll see uh, many uh, fantasy illustrators uh, they they draw like they've seen these creatures like in their backyard like you know but that it's it doesn't exist it, it it's really um, just from what they know um, and then putting that into a visual sort of medium. And, you know, like I said, you cannot like any part of this drawing because it was put in so quick that there's no big deal to erase and like get rid of like, okay, so, Say I don't need like this many lines for the for the foot, so I can I can simplify this. I can make everything soft in this area, and then I can try again, but with confidence, you know, like because I I just had that other experience with putting down those other lines that I didn't necessarily believe in. So by doing that, you're keeping it loose and keeping it keeping it free and. And by starting with one, it's, it's way more likely that you'll end with one. So I say starting with, with that feeling, you know, that what the action is and what that felt like. Because, you know, you have a, a say in it. You have an effect on what you're seeing. That's the, I think, the Heisenberg principle is, is that from physics. The observer and, and the thing that is observed are, are linked in that way, uh, so much so that it'll often affect what's being seen or observed. So, I think in the same way, like you have to sort of be patient and wait for the thing to develop in front of you and, and work with it and be willing to work with it. Like, a, if really, honestly, the, my approach to drawing is, is pretty uh, rooted in like the scientific method kind of thinking, like, right? First lines are a hypothesis, you know, an estimated or educated guess, which is what I think. Um, and then it, it, it develops from there. Hi, Jaden. I hate to interrupt. This is really, really fascinating. We are coming to the end of the hour. Um, okay. So I wanted to, everybody who had to run or had has other plans, I wanted to thank everybody for coming 
and um, I hope you can come to the future sessions. A any closing remarks, Katie? Yeah. Um, thank you all so much for being here and uh, listening to me uh, talk about, you know, my favorite subject, drawing, you know. Um, I hope everyone had uh, a pleasant time. You drew along. I hope that you continue to draw and, you know, work with your, your craft and, you know, continue to be patient and, and, and humble, but also, you know, courageous and, and be bold, you know, bold minds. Really put yourself out there. Um, yeah. I think those were my favorite points for the day. I could see um, the way you draw translating to all different forms of life. Um, um, something yeah. to take with you um, for anything that you do today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I and I think that really that's you know that's the point of art. You know, it really does condense down these lessons and teach you how to live. You know, in, in a very profound way okay well thank you everyone for attending um we hope you enjoyed i think afterwards there will be a short survey if you're interested in filling it up thank you